Welcome to the shop of Team MTR. I'm the junk man and today we're going to take apart a carburetor. This is a typical motorcycle carburetor. I'll forego the steps to taking the carburetor off the bike as they vary so greatly from model to model. This is a typical carburetor uh, called a constant velocity style. Um, meaning there's a diaphragm and it's operated by engine vacuum that actually opens and closes the slide here depending on how much air is running through the carburetor operated by the butterfly here which is connected to your throttle cable. Other types of carburetors have a mechanical slide where the throttle cable goes through the top of the carburetor and operates the slide directly. Regardless of the style of carburetor, uh, we're going to diagnose this one. We're having a problem with this bike, having the, the carburetor is overflowing. And I suspect it's a sticking float or a sinking float, or it could be that the uh, needle valve is just worn out. First thing we're going to do is we've got to turn it upside down. We need to take off the carburetor bowl, which is held on by four different screws here. Using a Phillips screwdriver, traditionally most of them are Phillips screwdrivers, I've already broken these loose, but some, some older bikes, these screws may be in here very tight or they're actually corroded. This is where your impact driver comes in handy. I've already done this, but you install your impact driver and give it a good tap and it'll break those loose and spin them so we can take them all out. It's important to not force these screws out because it's very easy to strip the heads of these screws. As you can see, these have been in and out a couple of times before I got a hold of the bike and they're a little bit boogered here. But using my impact driver, they came out no problem. If they're really bad, I would probably be replacing them, but these are good enough for now. All right, now that all the screws are out, we can take off the carburetor bowl. And if this bike was old and had been sitting for a long time, there would probably be a lot of uh, varnish or, or debris in here. This one's nice and clean um, because this bike was actually running just fine. It was just we were having a problem of flooding and uh, overflowing of the carburetor as it sits. So we have the carburetor bowl off so we can look a little closer here. You're going to see a couple things in here. Here's the float, which actually floats, as its name implies, and opens and closes the needle valve, which it's very hard to see, is right down in there. It opens and closes it to let them, as the fuel is sucked in through the engine, it opens and as fuel fills the float bowl, it uh, raises and then closes it and opens and closes. Right here, this is your main jet. It's typically in the center of the uh, carburetor. Down in here is our pilot or slow jet, depending on the type of carburetor you have. And some of them are right up top here. You know, this one's way down in there, and you need to get a very small screwdriver to go down in there to actually get it out. This right here, this looks like a screw down in there that it can actually be accessed with the float bowl on. In this carburetor, this is called a fuel screw. This meters the fuel at idle only. Other types of carburetors have an air screw, which will typically be on the back side of the carburetor near the air box, um, and it controls how much air can be getting into the idle circuit. Both do the same thing, but they function exactly backwards from each other. Let's start some disassembly. First of all, we need to remove the uh, pin that holds the float. And in this case, there's a little tab here, and we can use a flat head screwdriver to pry it out. Sometimes you may need to use a uh, small needle nose pliers to uh, actually wiggle and pull it out. Be very careful. You do not want to damage this or break these two legs. Then you're buying a whole new carburetor, which may or may not be available depending on your bike. We'll set this aside here. <clears throat> pull the float out. These happen to have plastic floats. Some may be brass. Uh, sometimes the floats will ride on two little posts that are in the float bowl and you'll just have this metal part that comes up and down and contacts the float um, depending on the style of carburetor. Now we can see the actual needle valve. There it is down in there. If we take our little needle nose pliers and pull it out, this is what it looks like. 
It's very small and it has a little tip on there that is spring loaded and it should should move freely. If it doesn't, it need, definitely needs replacing. All right, now the part that I suspect is bad is the seat. Or in this case, there might be an O-ring in here. First of all, we have to take out this screw, which is sometimes in there really hard. This one came out easy. If not, get your impact driver out. You do not want to strip this screw out either. I've actually pulled out the uh, seat and I uh, put the uh, needle valve back in just for clarity. Uh, and this style does have an O-ring in it and it feels pretty hard. So you know what? I don't think our problem is actually with the seat itself. I think it's actually just the O-ring here. Flu uh, fuel is allowed to leak by and that's what's flooding the carburetor. However, while we have it out, we want to take a look and it'll be very hard to see with the camera. It, um, I would almost have to put it under a magnifying glass, but I can see a faint wear line. It's not grooved, but it's a wear line where it rides up inside the seat, and it's possible that this is not making a proper seal when, it, when the float rises to shut off the fuel. Taking a look at our float here, I almost suspect that there is a tiny crack where these two halves are molded together. Um, it's, it's possible sometimes you can shake it and hear fuel rolling around in there. I can't with this one, but I suspect it. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to replace it just for good measure. It's still available from the factory, so why not replace it? I've just in installed our new seat for our needle valve. We can stick our needle valve in. Don't want to forget the little retaining screw. All right, since it was still available from the factory, we're gonna put our new float on. Now, later, we're gonna to have to set the float height because it's probably set incorrectly from the factory. But we have to install the pin, just wiggle it. Like I said, don't, uh, don't force it. We might just press it just a little bit there. All right, just wanna double check that uh, the needle and seat work and the float moves up and down freely, doesn't bind, isn't binding in any way. All right, now that we have our float installed, it's time to set our float height. Now you can do this a couple different ways. I have a little gauge like this that's graduated in millimeters and inches, but we're gonna use the millimeter scale. This is where you're gonna need the service manual to know what the spec is and where do you measure from. On this particular carburetor and bike, you measure from the base of the carb to the top of the uh, metal part of the float here. And uh, I have it already set to 13 millimeters, which is what the spec is for this bike. What you need to do is let the float drop and then let it just rest on the needle valve. Make sure it's in there, but not pressing the spring down. We're gonna put, put our gauge on there and I wanna double check it. And we don't want it to push down on the spring, but we don't want to see any any light between our gauge and and the float. And by golly, that looks really good. Now the spec is plus or minus one millimeter, so you know you don't have to get it perfectly exact. Um, I, I like to try to get it exact, and since this one's coming out just exactly on 13 millimeter. That just never happens. Uh, if we would need to adjust it, and I'll show you on the old float, there's this little, there's this little tang here. This is, this is what uh, contacts the needle valve and, and allows it to open and close. What you're gonna do if you want to essentially uh, lower the float, you're gonna bend it ever so slightly with a screwdriver. I know this was an overly simplified uh, video on how a carburetor works and how to disassemble one. Uh, I'll go on to tuning in maybe a future video, but I just want to show most people the basics, the basic problems that ha they have with their carburetors. So I hope you've learned something about how to take apart the carburetor and that it's really not that intimidating if you just work slow, be careful, and have a couple of hand tools and you can do this yourself.